Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here and welcome or welcome back to a new YouTube video on the channel and today guys I'm going to be doing my AFL 2023 round one preview. So yeah, pretty much going to be previewing every game in today's video. It's going to work very, um, pretty much the same as to how last year works. It's going to be round review, round preview, and they're going to be exactly the same. So most of you guys should know how these work. It's just an extended version of tipping. So without any further ado, let's go ahead, hop right into things. First game of the round, really excited for footy to be back. Richmond and Carlton started off with a bang. The traditional ride was going to be clashing on Thursday night at the MCG. And I feel like we do have our... I feel like we've got a really good game coming this year, and ever since about 2020 or 2021, these two sides have actually given us some pretty decent rivalries in the past few years and some really good games. Um, I feel like this is probably going to be another really good one. We know that both these sides, I mean, really their ultimate aim this year should be definitely top four, but I think they should be definitely settling on top eight. Carlton, we know they finished ninth last year, Richmond. Uh, finish just inside the top eight. I'm pretty sure seventh, and it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how these two sides go this year. Uh, we know Carlton had a decent preseason and Richmond as well. My tip is going to be Richmond by eleven in a very close game, but I feel like both these sides are gonna have multiple times where they lead, and it's gonna be a really exciting contest. So Friday night is Geelong versus Collingwood at the MCG, and. This is the rematch of last year's preliminary final where the Cats got over the line by just six points in a game which was an absolute thriller last year. Now, I feel like it's going to be another decently close game. The Cats could come out and absolutely smash the pies, but the Cats could be without Jeremy Cameron for the game. The, I doubt they'll have Tom Hawkins. So some of their tall timber down the forward line will be missing, which does leave the pies, the door slightly open to wedge their foot in for a bit of a chance in this one. Now, Collingwood, I don't know how they're going to come out and play this year. I, I really could not see them winning as many close games as they did last year. The Cats, we know how good they're going to be this year. I just feel like, regardless of what happens with their players, I just feel like the Cats are just such a good team. They went throughout the offseason, got so many younger players in the door. I just feel like it's hard not to tip them. So I'm going to tip them by 12 points in another close game. So North Melbourne versus West Coast is the first game on Saturday at Marvel Stadium. And these two sides we know last year both finished inside the bottom four and probably predicted, I'd, I'd probably predict it and say with some sort of comfortableness as well, that these two sides will probably finish inside the bottom four again. I feel like they'll probably both finish 15th, 16th, 1 15th, 1 16th. One might have the chance to even rise out of the bottom four perhaps, but I still do feel like definitely one of these sides will be in there and probably the highest one of these sides could go be 13, 14. So... Both these two sides, both these two sides do have some reasonable young talent. We know what West Coast have got. They've got Chester, they've got Gibney, and we know North Melbourne. They've got Wardlaw, Sheasel, and then they've also gone and added some additions like um, Liam Shields, Daniel Howe, uh, Darcy Tucker, Griffin Logue. So they they don't have a bad list, North Melbourne, and they've gone and recruited Alistair Clarkson to be their coach this year as well, which is a massive, massive coup for North Melbourne. West Coast, we know they're going to be struggling without Josh Kennedy this year down the forward line. But I'm actually a real believer of of, of Oscar Allen. I feel like he actually has a really bright future. Keep in mind he's young. We haven't seen a lot of him. It might take him a little while to get back up to AFL standard. But I do feel like he's going to have a good year this year. And I feel like he's at least going to kick 35 goals this year for West Coast. Uh, I feel like it's going to be a really close game, low-scoring game as well. I feel like these two sides are going to be playing a bit of a scrappy brand of footy. I've said North Melbourne by seven in a close one. Port Adelaide versus Brisbane is the twilight time stop game. And this is going to be really interesting. Brisbane, we know they do maybe have a couple slight niggles away from home. And Port Adelaide, they're a superior side at the Adelaide Oval. We do know how good they play there. And they could just about knock off any side there or get close to doing so. I feel like this will be a really interesting contest, especially on Brisbane's, um, I mean, on both these two sides, really. Where are Port Adelaide at and where are Brisbane at? Are the real questions that are going to be coming out from this game? And I feel like for Port Adelaide, it's really, that they've got to win. They really do. I feel like they, they've got the list, they've got the home ground advantage, the fan advantage, that they should be able to take this up to Brisbane and they should be able to win. In my opinion, though, I do feel like Brisbane will win. They've got some additions like um, Dunkley, Ashcroft, Fletcher, Gunston. And, and then you put them with the names they've already got, like Neil, uh, Hipwood, 
you, you just you're just talking mega mega team there. Uh, one of the most stacked teams in the competition, if not the most stacked. And I just feel like Brisbane are going to be one of the hardest teams to beat this year. And even in the Adelaide Oval, they should be able to get the job done pretty comfortably. And I've said them to do it by 25 points. Now on to Saturday night footy at the MCG. Melbourne versus the Western Bulldogs. And I reckon this could be a little bit of a better game than some people may think. Um... Now, we do know this was the 2021 grand final rematch. These two sides played each other in 2021. And it opened up the season for 2022. No grand final rematch to open up the season this year uh, as Richmond and Carlton. However, um, I feel like this could be a good game now. Melbourne, we know Gorn and Grundy should be an absolute dynamic duo for the Demons. And I feel like they're going to be really tough to beat, especially in that hit-out area. Tim English, I do I do see him being a good ruckman in the future. He's definitely coming around, though, um, from what we saw. I, I just feel like if you've got Gordon and Grundy in the same team, I, I just don't think you can beat them. Now, the Ds, we know, like, they've, they've, they've taken a couple of the Western Bulldogs players in that sort of sense. I'm pretty sure Shaki went to the Ds. They got Hunter. So they have taken a couple of the Bulldogs players throughout the offseason. And... I feel like Lockie Hunt is quite an underrated player. And for the Western Bulldogs, they're going to something a little bit more interesting this year. Four key forwards. So how are they going to roll it? Because you've got some of the likes of Norton, Darcy, Jamari, Uhagen. Um, You've got Bruce. Yeah, Norton, Jamari, Uhagen, Darcy, Bruce. There's a whole mix of names. And then down the back end, you've got some like Jones, Gardner, Keith. You do have some medium, uh, bigger players down there in the back end as well for the Western Bulldogs. They've, and then uh, Bustling as well is another taller player. So they've got plenty of choices, the Western Bulldogs, for their tall supplies. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what sort of team they roll with for round one. Their midfield is a very good midfield as well. So I feel like they actually could come close in this game. I've predicted the Demons by 28. I reckon it'll be a close game. The Ds will just run away with it in the end. Gold Coast v Sydney. The, uh, this is going to be an interesting game at Heritage Bank Stadium. Gold Coast, we know they are good up there, and we know that they've got Mubby Troll, uh, Ben Kingley by Casbolt. Whether they play all three will be interesting to see. They have lost Rankin. They're going to lose a little bit of flair in that forward line. Whether they play Tom Berry or not is a big question. The Swans, on the other hand, will their grand final defeat last year, their heavy grand final de- defeat, will that cause some havoc and some pain this year. Only time will tell, and I feel like we'll have a very good indication about that after round 10 and where they sit on the ladder as well, considering Sydney actually don't have a too bad of a start to the year. If they've probably dropped six games by round 10, then you know they're in a bit of trouble. Um, but I feel like this is actually going to be a really close game. Gold Coast is going to compete. Sydney are going to have a good game. I just feel like it'll be the Swans by eight. I just feel like it's hard to go past them with all the young players they've got. But I feel like Gold Coast will give this game a very red-hot crack and be a chance to win all game. GWS versus Adelaide. A lot of people predicting the Giants in this game. In a bit of an upset because I'd, I'd assume the Crows would go in favourites. However, no, the Giants are actually favourites and lots of people are tipping them, which is interesting. Now, the Giants, we do know they do have some of their very good players left. We do know that Canelio and, um, sorry, Taranto and Hopper left. But some of the likes of Kelly, Canelio, Himmelberg, Toby Green, uh, Lockie Whitfield are still at the club. So they're actually not as badly depleted as what people think. I do feel like some of those players that I have just uh, mentioned, though, have, haven't have been as great as what they actually, uh, what their names kind of mean. They're not as great as... Um, what they have been in the past. But if they can actually get back to a bit of form, the Giants could be up and rolling this year and could actually dig their way out of the bottom four. And that would be a massive, massive, um, massive plus for them. You've got some likes of uh, Finn Callaghan, Tom Green up and coming, and then some likes of Cadman and all the other players they picked up, all those other top 25 players they picked up in the draft. It's actually not looking too bad for the Giants. And they could have a year where they might actually escape the bottom four. And they could finish higher than the Crows on the ladder should they have a good enough season. Adelaide, I feel like they're a very exciting team. We know they've got a great midfield, headlined by Sloan, Laird, Keys. But you've also got likes of Saligo, Berry, Rochelle and Rankin might play in there. But the forward line, Rochelle, Rankin, Fogarty, Walker, um, McAdam or whoever else they're going to play in there. Looks dangerous, and I feel like they're going to they're have no problem scoring this year. Michael Laney also looks pretty good down back along with the likes of Duday. But... 
uh, Smith, Dawson. So I feel like they're actually getting there, the Adelaide Crows. I've tipped the Crows to win this game by 20, 23. I, I just feel like they're going to start their year off well and show they could make the top eight. Hawthorne versus Essen is the next game. And this is going to be an, an interesting game. The Bombers are favourites, but the Hawks could definitely pull off the upset. Now, both these two sides have lots of young talent. Have a Hawthorne this year. They're going in with the youngest list in the competition. Got rid of over a thousand games of experience in the off season and are going fully reset young talent mode. And it could drive them to a couple of wins. I feel like with Adelaide, what they've been like in the past couple of years, Hawthorne will show some competitiveness and some fight this year. Might take them a little while to get there, but these young players talk about them sticking around. They could be sticking around for seven, eight, nine, ten years and by then once all these young players have developed should they be in the same team and a flag could definitely be there for the Hawks they'll just have that team gel which just bonds them all together and they could be a real premiership threat if these players stick around for a long period of time that that could be dangerous and for the Bombers we know they've, they've added a bit of talent throughout the offseason as well uh, Elijah Sardis looks pretty good. I don't think he'll play in round one, though. I'm pretty sure he's injured right now. I have tipped the Bombers by 11, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Hawks were to win this one. The last game of the round is St Kilda versus Fremantle at Marvel Stadium. And this is going to be an interesting contest, but I do feel like the Dockers will win for mine by 15 points. Max King is a big injury blow for the Saints, but then they've also got some others like Tim Membry and a bunch of other players which are down with injuries. And that's not a great start for Ross Lyon, especially when he'd want to beat his old side, Fremantle. Fremantle, I feel like Nat Fife could be decent up forward. I'm not sure what sort of year he's going to have. He could have an absolute horrible year and, and really not do anything for the Dockers, or he could be right in all Australian contention and could get 35 goals up there in the forward line. Uh, we saw what he did against Port Adelaide. He looks dangerous. and Let's see if that will be on show in round one versus St Kilda. And... That is going to be pretty much it for my preview. Dockers by 15, as I said. My tips, Richmond, Geelong, North Melbourne, Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide, Essendon, Fremantle. So it's going to be a really interesting round. I feel like most of these games could really go 50-50. They are pretty tough. And the amount of upsets that you can see in round one as well that you weren't expecting uh, can be quite high. So bring on this year's footy season. I'm really excited to see how this year pans out. I feel like this is going to be a really tight contest as well. But thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so then you guys will never miss another video on the channel. Thank you guys all so much. And subscribe run, Flaming Footy out.